Um, Want to go now to NBC News correspondent Cal Perry, who is standing by live for us um, in Lviv, Ukraine. Cal, it's good to see you, my friend. Um, let's just kind of talk about what's taken place over the last 12 hours or so. It has been a brutal day of shelling attacks um, across the country there. Um, you had a TV tower um, in Kyiv hit by Russian forces. According to Ukraine's interior ministry, at least five people were killed there. Uh, there's this video showing smoke surrounding uh, the tower there. Um, there is also surveillance video showing an explosion at a regional government building. The interior ministry is saying at least 10 people were killed there. How, how is the government today, right now, at this hour, uh, responding to these assaults? I think it was a big development, the TV tower getting hit. By the way, when we talk about civilian casualties, we're going to be using the phrase at least an awful lot because yeah. the reality is we don't have a good picture on how many civilians have been killed across the country, right? We just don't know. I mean, the city of Kharkiv, all the way in the northeastern part of the country, is being shelled right now heavily, and there is heavy fighting there. So people are dying. That is the reality. How is the government reacting? When those TV stations went down, again, I think that was a big moment here because for six days now, the Ukrainian people and journalists included. We've been getting a lot of our information off Ukrainian television. We know, of course, this is what they want us to see. We know that it is its own form of propaganda, but it was a way of Zelensky to communicate with the Ukrainian people without any interruption on television. He will still use Telegram. He'll still be able to use his social media access. But this was one of those first things that we thought maybe we would see at the beginning of the war. We thought maybe the Russians would take out the communications. They would take out the television. They've done it today. Curious why on day six, but I, I think it'll have an effect, Yasmin, for sure. So talk Talking about Zelensky, as you just mentioned him, right, communicating um, with the public there, we, we know at the beginning of this whole thing, actually, he, he tried to address and or communicate with, with the Russian people to reach out to them and obviously been communicative yeah. through social media as well uh, with the Ukrainian people there. I'm um, speaking with the European Parliament, um, saying we are literally, himself included, fighting for our lives. And we are seeing that in every story told. Um, tell us more as to what we heard from him. Boy, and he... He has struck this chord with the Ukrainian people and with the world, I think. And, and, and talk about a leader who has literally risen from the ashes. I mean, this is a man who is seen on morning television drinking coffee in a trench with the soldiers of the Ukrainian army, a man who, according to the government, is actually leading and helping to plan the resistance um, of the capital. He gave this impassioned speech today. At one point, the translator even, even breaking up. You're going to hear it, uh, I think, in this clip here. Take a little bit of a listen to what he had to say today. Square. Can you imagine this morning two cruise missiles hit this Freedom Square? Dozens of killed ones. This is the price of freedom. Do prove that you are with us. Do prove that you will not let us go. Do prove that you indeed are Europeans. And then life will win over death, and light will win over darkness. Glory be to Ukraine. Emotionally, that's, that's where the Ukrainian people are. I mean, I see it every day here in the city of Lviv. People are completely emotionally exhausted. I'm not even just talking about folks that come from Kiev and Kharkiv where the shelling is heavy. But it's hard to imagine, but it's true even here, when the sirens go off five or six times a day, it rattles people. People run to the bomb shelters. They run back. Um, and so this is a nation that is exhausted. This is a nation that is at war. And they're feeling very well represented by their president. Six days in, um, and we don't even know how much longer this is actually going to yeah. go on. Or again, what the end game is here. Today I saw a quote, I believe, from Michael McFall saying, listen, Vladimir Putin gets Kiev, and then what? And then what is he actually going to do with that city? And then what does the future of that country look like? You were speaking with folks, as you mentioned, I want to pull on this thread a little bit, um, uh, inside of a camp there in Lviv. That's supposed to be the safe zone, right? 30 miles or so, I believe, um, from the Polish border. Um, what did they have to say about their experiences so far? You know and, and you and I have been talking about this now for, for the better part of a week, right, that, that um, maybe Putin won't uh, attack here, that the Russian army won't come here because it's, it is so close, uh, not only to the border with Europe, but to the border with NATO. Um, and I was talking to a 12-year-old girl today who spoke perfect English. She went to school in Canada, and she looked at me and my whole crew, and she said, you don't think the war will come here? It could very easily come here. And I'm sort of like, wow, I mean, this is the way people are thinking here. They have no idea mm -hmm. how wide this war is going to get. In addition to that... You have this civilian-led Herculean effort to try to get supplies both to the front, but also to help 
refugees who have come here. And it's like everybody now serves a dual role as either a volunteer and a soldier, as a doctor and a soldier, a medic and a soldier, you know, a teacher and a soldier. I had a chance to speak to a volunteer. I asked him sort of to explain to me what was going on. Here's, a, a, again, a little bit of his story. And this is a tragedy. And this is a Putin's fault that we are now at war. And the people are dying, and the children children are dying. And uh, I believe in the end, and the whole territory, the whole, the whole Ukrainians believe that we will We will win this war. If you have to fight, will you fight? Yeah. The first and second day we were here, we would ask people what were their reactions were to the war, and there was such a marked difference between that and now, between the war has arrived for your country and the war has arrived for you. And I think almost a week into this war, as you speak to people individually, you're seeing that the war has arrived for them. It is affecting their personal lives. It has touched everyone's life now in this country, as well. And they're probably asking, will we ever be able to go home? And what will that home look like? Who will it be governed by? Um, as always, Cal Perry, my friend, you and your team stay safe. Um, thanks for joining us this hour. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.